Pace and good evening. And we also say shalom, peace to you. What a privilege I have to be with you again and worship God of Abraham, Jacob, Isaac, and Jacob together. And I believe it's always good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. It's always good to come and praise our God and thank Him, especially for the hope of salvation we have in our Lord Jesus Christ. To remember about a great joy we have because our sins are forgiven. Even when we do not understand different things happens in our lives, we are blessed because we can trust in the Lord. And the Bible says that God is good. The Bible also says when we are faithful, everything that's going to happen is going to be for goodness. That we may see Him, our Lord, and see His light, because only in the light of Jesus Christ we can see ourselves and our needs in Him. That we may deny ourselves and crucify our eye and take a cross with the thankfulness and continue by his path again with thankfulness continuing his word to learn from him how to love more how to forgive more how to just be like our Lord Jesus Christ and it's so good that we have a place here which God chose that we as his church could come and worship him so may the Lord bless us to all of the blessings we have Amen. to continue learn from the word of God as God continues to prepare us for his kingdom because very very soon he's going to return to restore his kingdom on this earth I also want to thank you so much for your prayers for your financial support of the ministry maybe a little more than one year ago I came first time and I shared about the ministry reaching Jews and no Jews in America in Canada also I shared about my life and how God uh, found me and gave me grace and mercy to repent and accept Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. So I want to again remind you that God wants to use you to proclaim His glory in Chicago. And I want to read a couple of verses from the Bible, from Romans chapter 10. I'm going to ask my brother, Pastor, because I don't have a Romanian Bible. I wanted that he read from the Romanian Bible, just two verses from Romans chapter 10, verses 14 and 15. Romans 10, 14 and 15. Dar cum vor chema pe acela în care n-au crezut? Și cum vor crede în acela despre care n-au auzit? Și cum vor auzi despre el fără propovăduitor? Și cum vor propovădui dacă nu sunt trimiși? După cum este scris, cât de frumoase sunt picioarele celor ce vestesc pacea, ale celor ce vestesc Evangelia. Amen. Amen. Does God love Chicago? What do you think? Amen. What, why do you think that God loves Chicago? Because your church is here. Because you are here. Because God wants to use you to proclaim His glory. You are responsible for this city. When God gave His great commission to His apostles, it's not just for his apostles, but I believe he gave this great commission to all of us if you are children of God. You call yourself as a children of God? Sure, you're going to say yes, because you are born again Christian. If you are born again Christian, you should remember a day when your life changed. Again, I want to remind you that God wants to use you. Don't be ashamed, don't be scared. Don't be afraid, but tell others about Jesus Christ. I just want to encourage you because it's a very important. Don't forget that so many people in your city, they live, they die, and if they die without Christ, they die forever. And I want to encourage you, share gospel. I'm not talking now about to move Africa and Asia, do a full-time missionary work there, or maybe in other places. I'm just, I just preaching that you know, if you are a Christian, you should have inside of your soul this wish to tell others about Jesus Christ. Even when we work very hard and we are very tired anyway, we go to grocery stores and buy food, right? Milk, bread, when acacia is scanning your food, you have a one, two minutes to tell about Jesus, right? We can't say, Jesus to obey, right? We can. I love uh, ice cream. McDonald's and I'm blessed especially in new weather here so cold I stay inside of my car and I buy my ice cream through the window I give them my credit card and receive ice cream but I have a couple of minutes to tell about Jesus so many Muslim people own gas stations in your city 
we can tell them too. We don't need to fly China. I have a lot of uh, uh, Romanian friends and they feed me very well always. But sometimes I go to Chinese buffet. So I don't need to fly China, but I can meet Chinese people in Chinese buffet and tell them just a couple words in Chinese language. Isu Sinju means Jesus is the Lord. Could we learn a little bit in Chinese? What about Arabic? What about Farsi? What about Russian? Could we just learn just a couple words to tell people about Jesus Christ? We know that Jesus Christ is only the way to be saved, brothers and sisters. No other ways. No other ways. It's the only way. So you Jew without Christ, or Muslim, or Buddhist, whoever you are, if you don't have Jesus, you don't have a hope. And it's not my judgment. It's what the Bible says very clearly, that it's only one way to be saved. Sure, we cannot save people. Only God can save. Jesus can save. He is God. But we can tell people who can save them. We can tell them about Jesus and maybe give them Bibles. Our ministry, we, we love, we prefer to distribute Bibles in different languages because we believe that only one of God can bring people to salvation. In the streets or malls, in Chicago we do work in the malls and the streets and a couple of few brothers, I don't know, Rod is not here tonight, but uh, last uh, here, they helped me, you people helped me. Went together to the mall, uh, Woodville Mall, I don't remember which one, but they saw, you know, we go to the malls, we buy a cloth, cloth, right? So stop at a kiosk. Israelis, a lot of Israelis, a lot of Arab people from Afghanistan, some Romanian, you know, they have a business, a small kiosk. Sell cosmetic from Dead Sea or toys or different things, just to stop it and tell about Jesus. Sometimes we're going to think, so what about, so if I'm going to tell what's going to happen, we don't know. Because I'm not trusting uh, by myself. I don't have any power. But I trust into the Holy Spirit. To the power of the Holy Spirit. I know if I'm going to pray for people, it's going to work. Because I know that God saved, only, uh, God saved me only by His mercy. Only. Nothing good was in me, but He saved me. So I can pray for people even whom, don't I, whom I don't know. And I ask the Lord the mercies upon them. Because I believe that God can save whoever, whoever he wants to save. A lot of opportunities. Isaiah, when he heard, when the Lord asked, who come for us? Now I have a question. You think God needs our help? But he asked, right? And Isaiah heard, who come for us? Isaiah responded, here I am, send me. Because it's for us. It's our privilege to be a part of God's plan of God's work on this earth. It's our blessing to be a part of great God's work in Chicago, Illinois, where so many Romanian-speaking people live, and so many Romanian-speaking people don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. How many Romanian people live in the Chicago area? 10,000, 20, 50, more? How many churches, evangelical churches, do you have? How many believers, born again believers, are some members? Much less, right? So where are others? And you are here. I cannot speak Romanian. I just know a couple of words. But you are here. You are here. Just to open your heart. Make yourself available. And you're going to see how God is going to use you to proclaim His glory. It's what we see through our ministry. We are very small. But God bless us that we now share the gospel of Christ in nine states. We don't have any base, the financial, something, but if God could, could use us, sure he can use you. He can use you to proclaim his glory in your city. We start a new ministry in Canada, and we are very blessed. Sure, it's a very tough, very hard to share gospel, especially to share to the Jews about Jesus as a Messiah. Very hard. But we always have a joy in our hearts. And we see how people repent. Most people reject. They, they, they decline. But we know that even one is important for the Lord. Right? We just read these two verses. God already, he wants that we go. He, he sent us as uh, his children. But the biggest problem we have, we don't want to share. We don't want to share. We're shame. 
But I always ask, could we maybe find 20 minutes in a month? Dear youth, I don't want to criticize you, but sometimes I don't like a coffee, but my wife likes coffee. And Starbucks coffee, we see a lot of youth from churches. They could speak and have a different kind of speech, two hours, three hours, for what kind of car they have, what kind of the different things they have, what kind of the clothes they have. Could we just take the 10, 20 minutes and say how you love the Jesus and share gospel to the workers there, or to the people there? Could we do it? Again, I don't have a target to criticize anybody. I just want to remind you that God wants to use it to proclaim his glory, especially that we don't have a lot of time. We know this. We read the Bible. We see what's going on in the world. I'm not prophet, but I know we don't have a lot of time. And a great persecution going to come against the church. But anyway, until today, praise God, nobody arrested us, right? We came freely to worship God. Do you wallow the blessings? Do you remember that the first day of the week, the Sunday, it's no day off? Do you remember this? It's a day which God also chooses to bless his children and to teach his children. So wallow the blessings. So many of our brothers and sisters today under persecution in different countries. Do you remember now? Do you pray for them? Don't miss your services. But be wise. To be wise, ask Lord for wisdom. Because Lord gives wisdom. Ask. And Lord wants it. We ask. It's good. To ask Lord for wisdom. To ask Lord for faith. To seek his kingdom first and be thankfulness, especially for salvation in Christ. To seek to have a heart according to the word of God. Again, thousand people could say to you that we don't want to hear gospel. Yes. You know, some people try to, we're going to watch a couple minutes, just to, some videos. I'm going to start just to share with a couple testimonies. Sometimes they want to hit you, uh, beat you. You know, different things happen, but again, if not, we who? Sure, a lot of people are going to say they don't want, but you continue. Be encouraged and remember that Jesus himself didn't have a lot of disciples, right? All people, all Jews repented? No. No, he didn't have a lot of disciples. But he also says, when two or three come, come on his name, he's between. It's the most beautiful we have. That his promises. But we need just to obey his word. And just to remember. So beautiful, so good. To tell us all this about Jesus Christ. So beautiful, so good to pray for people, even who maybe hate us, but to bless them according to the word of God. Just to be like Jesus Christ, our Lord. So we continue. Even ministry is very hard reaching Jews, Muslims. I am myself from Jewish Muslim background, but God gave me mercy. I remember my life. And you know, God bless us last time in Chicago. Uh, and uh, we went to the plaza streets, shared the gospel, went to the mall, shared the gospel, met people from different countries. And it's always good to proclaim the glory of Christ. San Francisco, one of the cities where, where we operate, very hard because a lot of gay there. I heard that 65% of the people who live in uh, San Francisco, even more, are gay. Could you imagine? But San Francisco is a city where, uh, you know, like it's kind of like European city, you know. And I don't know, I, again, I say I, I, I'm no prophet, but last time, I just a couple months ago, have been there. And when I drove through the streets, I saw city under the water. I saw that, that, that the water covered all this ocean, covered the city, totally destroyed. I saw this. I don't know how to explain you, how to tell you, but I saw. I don't know how, but I saw. And uh, a lot of Jewish people live there, and we go to the streets there. We try to use the public ministry now more. I mean, like a public witnesses. And I remember I met a woman, American woman, and I stopped her, and a woman in middle age, and I'm telling her, I have a wonderful news for you. And she stopped. I don't know what... <laughs> She thought I'm going to tell her, but she stopped and asked me, what kind? I told her, Jesus loves you. And she responded, ah, 
I don't want to copy her, but she didn't like what I said to her. And she started to walk, and I started to continue to say, Dear woman, Jesus loves you. And she showed me a middle finger. So it happens too. Happens too. Another woman whom I met, uh, Turkish from Iran, Muslim. Older woman, but she was touched. She opened her heart to receive the gospel of John in Farsi language in Jesus moving. Another in Philadelphia, where we are three times in a year, I met a rabbi who told me that I'm a sick and I need to see doctor psychiatrist. And he offered me money, telling me, go buy medication, drink, and after your brain going to start to work well. You will become a real Jew. I say, I'm a real Jew now. Because be more Jewish to be belief in Jesus Christ. Another Muslim, she was sitting in her car and listening to the Quran. You know the Quran, the Islamic is main book, like Quran, a religious book. And she was hearing, uh, I'm sorry, listening by uh, the, the, the tape, whatever, CD. I came to her and started to witness, and she started crying. An Albanian Muslim repentant in Philadelphia, a Turkish Muslim Seattle, in Sacramento, in the malls, also we met maybe 12, just a couple months ago, 12 Israelis, half of them accepted Bibles. But remember, so many people here in Chicago, we don't have this kind of opportunities in Cleveland. We are based in Cleveland, Ohio. But you have. But remember, even one is important for the Lord. Because price for one's soul, it's the blood of Jesus. And just a couple more testimonies. I see that my time I think maybe almost passed, or already passed, but I'll, I'll take just uh, two more minutes. Uh, and we wanted to show videos now. And when we show videos, God is my witness, I don't like to do it, but maybe it's good and we do more because some churches, they ask us because, you know, they want to watch it, they want to see it. But this is us examples for you. Again, you don't need to have a special theological education to witness. You don't need to know Hebrew. You don't need to speak Greek just to have an open heart. Just to have a heart. Sure, police could come. They try to maybe sometimes give you a ticket. Maybe, you know, it's big problems here in the country. We see last couple of years they try to stop the evangelization, different areas, even public. Simple gospel. Simple gospel. We could start from Portland, Oregon. It's just a month and a half ago. And with sound. So we wit uh, uh, we're witnessing there in the malls, and after we decided to witness publicly in downtown Portland. And um, we went with a couple of brothers from a Slavic evangelical church there. They just helped me, you know, and uh, you're going to see a group of the youth people who were under drugs, most of them. Always, always when someone starts to do something for the Lord, opposition going to be always. Because they will going to try to stop it. Because the devil doesn't want the people here about the way how to be saved. But we know that Lord won. And we are part of the victory. We are part of the victory, but also we could, and we should. We have to just to watch ourselves, but this is the video. So Portland, downtown, very European. People use the trains for public transportation. So we went there, we had a poster, maybe two posters from Bible, it's our preparation. Sure, we always, we always pray that God bless us, give us a wisdom, that God bless people. And I always pray, say, Lord, even one, even one. But anyway, but God sent his disciples. He sent them to share. People have to hear it. And they going to make a decision. Nobody, nobody can say after their life on this earth, Lord, when he, they're going to stand in front of God and say, Lord, we didn't hear it. 
Lord, you didn't send anyone to our life to tell us of the way of salvation. Nobody going to say this because everyone going to hear it. You see the youth, they didn't like, maybe 15, 16, 17 years, they really didn't like when immediately I start to share gospel. A lot of them scream 666, devil, they call to, <laughs> to him, you know. Now you're going to see some, we, can, we cannot show all the video, but a uh, little conflict you're going to see, but praise God, he who protects. Somebody going to take something from a uh, ground and throw it at me? I don't know, stone or I don't know. I didn't see, but it wasn't hit. It wasn't hit. They start to provoke us in the, with the different questions. But he's dancing well, right? It's a good guy. <laughs> they need to hear it. Please, next video. This is a Canada. We went to Niagara Falls and shared the gospel. So many tourists from around the world. This is a family from Pakistan, a Muslim family. You know, see, one of the members, she uh, has problem with her back, couldn't walk. So just to share, you see my t-shirt? Could you read it, the sign? Jesus made me kosher. Yes, because only Jesus can make us clean yeah, Kostya, and free. Kostya, let's pray for Zainab, okay? This is a Slavic evangelical pray. church. I want to tell you that twice Canadian police tried to arrest me there, and I unfortunately cannot continue witness in Canada, Niagara Falls. They told me the third one going to be jail. I cannot witness anymore, but I can enter Canada and do the work in different places. But not anymore in the Niagara Falls. But what happened there? We met tourists from around the world, more than 1,000 people. We distributed a lot of Bibles. It was uh, uh, July, August, I don't remember exactly. But anyway, last year. But anyway, we also used the public ministry witnesses. And what happened? When I shared, was sharing gospels, some people decided to stop, sit, and listen. And I saw two men. Young and old. And I, when I was speaking, I figured out that the young man was a translating to the old man. What I was just a preaching. And when, usually I preach seven, eight minutes, maybe less. But when I finished, I always try to make people, offer them Bibles. So I came to these two men. And I figured out that they are from Iran. From Iran, and they are Muslims. Son and father, and son translated to father. Now, my father was a Muslim, and my ancestors came from Iran too, so I shared with them. And now father started to talk and telling his son, translate to me into English that word of God I preached touched his heart. Praise God. And I just thought he maybe, I don't know, maybe he moved to Canada, maybe he's going to back to Iran, maybe he lives in a mountain area. You think they have an internet there? You know, if they're going to find that you converted to Christianity, it's a death penalty. You don't have a chance to survive. They find the Bible? Jail. You think uh, uh, they have a Christian store at the corner there to buy Bibles? No, sure not. But we met them there. And you met, and you can meet them here in Chicago. So may the Lord bless you. Please continue pray for us. If you wish to learn more for our, for, for, about our ministry, uh, you may see me after the service. I have these flyers. I don't have a lot because I distributed a lot this time, but I have an English. We have a website. You could watch the much more videos through our website. You also have opportunity to receive my prayer letters every month. If you wish, if God leads your heart, if you could help us, if you could, and Lord leads you, we'll be glad also to receive you. Help. May the Lord bless you. Domnus ava bine cuventese, mulțumesc, and pace. Thank you so much.
Mulțumim, fratele Igor, un om pe care Dumnezeu l-a chemat din, de la muslim și care, după cum ați observat, nu poate tăcea. Dumnezeu să-L binecuvinteze și să ne ajute și pe noi să fim martori ai învierii Lui. Amin. Continuăm închinarea, un grup de fete vor lăuda pe Domnul cu o cântare, apoi familia Varga se va închina înainte Domnului și ei cu o cântare, după aceste două cântări ascultăm o poezie prin sora Angelica Bulancea, apoi corul bisericii și după punctele anunțate ascultăm din nou cuvântul Domnului prin fratele Vasile Trufin și ne rugăm ca Domnul să ne inspire și să dea călăuzire. Amin.